We tracked them down. Again, a couple minutes past the 1 o'clock hour, Rich Kenyon is here. And uh, Lenny Cook, uh, who was, if you don't know Lenny's story, it's really remarkable because you talk about one of the most highly touted basketball ballers to come out of New York, uh, youngster, put up the points, played against the likes of LeBron. We'll get into the backstory. He's incredible. But now uh, getting his feet wet down in Atlantic City uh, as part of the uh, Gene Allen uh, coaching staff with the men's uh, basketball team. And uh, good to catch up with you. Appreciate you coming in for a couple moments. Thanks for having me. Uh, you, st- you, you still look like you can play. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I was talking about, I came in um, maybe about a month ago on the air and I mentioned to uh, my producer Josh I said did you see the Lenny Cook doc did you see the Lenny Cook story he goes no I didn't I said you got to watch it I said because it's different from like a hoop dreams um but it the, the, the way you follow a young player and kind of the ups and downs of one's career of one's life um you know your story is really remarkable because you were the man coming out of New York. I mean, you, you were one of the most highly decorated, highly touted uh, high school players out there. But talk a little bit about how the documentary, and then we'll start to get in your life, uh, came about. Well, the documentary was supposed to have been about uh, the number one player in the country coming out of high school. Uh, they was going to follow him to whatever uh, team he get drafted to. Uh, and it's supposed to have been like a Basically, it's like a positive story as sure. far as, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. we're going to follow this guy, see where he goes, what right. he does when right. he gets to the NBA. Uh, but things didn't pan out that way. So uh, after the draft, we lost contact for a while, me and the producers, because um, I was in a shell for the fact that I didn't get drafted. I didn't want to be bothered and stuff right. like that. Um, so then they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to use it as a stepping stone to help the next generation. And I was like, let's do it. Yeah. It need to be told because uh, it's a million Lenny Cooks out here. Yep. And uh, I'm just blessed with the opportunity to share my story and help the next generation of student athletes. You know, the, 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 I don't want to say the sad part, but the reality of it, the harsh part is sometimes, as you mentioned, there's a million Lenny Cooks out there. Uh, when you follow these guys around, when you do docs, when you follow them step by step, it it doesn't always have that happy ending. <laughs> but it's typically the ones that don't have the happy ending that really resonate and with it helps someone else. exactly now you, you go back you were you were recruited uh, heavily recruited I, I told you this the other day on the phone you know i don't know if you were uh academically ineligible mm. i was kind of looking forward to you going to st john's back in the day yeah. if it was I right around my letter of intent two, to go to st. Yeah, john's. 2001 2002 it would have been you ingram king marcus uh, hatton willie shaw those guys so yes yeah, uh, so, you know. we had we had a we had the top recruiting class you in did. the country that year you did uh alan ray yeah Jason Frazier, yep. all of those guys ended up going to uh, Villanova yeah. uh, because they fired Coach Jarvis. Yeah, yeah that's so right. So that was one of the decisions. That and it's was, after they won the NIT, too. I think mm-hmm. it was the year after they won the NIT. And that was one of the reasons that I uh, ended up putting my name in the draft because they fired Coach Jarvis. Coach Jarvis was loyal to me, and I had my son uh, at that time as well. Now, you, you what was it, your uh, your second or third year when you, you – did you transfer over to LaSalle Academy? Uh, my, my freshman year. Your freshman year at yeah, Academy. Academy. So you were you were averaging what, twenty five and ten? Yeah. Um yeah. and then all of a sudden, okay, that that kinda opens up a lot of eyes and whatnot now and you, you turn nineteen in two thousand and one. Now were you a- academically ineligible to play? Uh in, ba- in Jersey? No. When you when when um the whole situation happened, um according to high school athletics, the rule from your um, uh, from your home county in New Jersey, was there any issue there? No, I could have played. Okay. I could have played, uh, but it would have been only the second half of the season. Right, right. Um, and I just they a lot of people wanted me to go prep that year. Right. Um, which would have put me at Oak Hill with Carmelo. Sure. And I was like, man, I'm not going to prep school with Carmelo. It's not enough basketball for me and Carmelo. <laughs> um, so I, I decided to just like work out, uh, sit out the season, work out do the uh, All-American games and stuff like that. Now, let me ask you this. If for those, and again, that did not see the documentary, it premiered uh, 2013 Tribeca Film Festival. Um, and again, it's dubbed Lenny Cook, uh, who's joining us for a couple moments in, in studio uh, on this Friday on 97.3 ESPN FM. You know, when you're, when you're that age and everyone's drooling over you, they all want to put their hand in the cookie jar, 
talk a little bit about that part where, okay, you're starting to blossom. People know who you are. You're flat out balling all over the place. I mean, I, I don't know. Did you ever play? Did you play street ball in Rucker Park? Yeah. I was, okay. Okay. Uh, the youngest uh, get MVP. That's, yeah. In Rucker Park. Yeah. Uh, I had I had one one. Uh, well, I'll tell you later on. But one little. It wasn't even a glimmer. No, I watched the game. I didn't play in the game. Yeah. But just one <laughs> glimmer of watching some of these guys back in the day in Rucker Park. But um, when did all of a sudden the, the guys start coming out of the woodwork? Where Hey, uh, sign with me. Let me give you some money here. Let me give you cash here. Let me buy you some new kicks here. Let me get you some clothes here. Hey, you need a car. I'll hook you up with a car. Uh, the, the, talk about all the false promises and some of the guys I mean, that you start it, to run into. It, it was crazy because, like, my name just came out of nowhere. No one knew who I was. I wasn't playing basketball in, like, middle school in New York and stuff like that. So uh, my sophomore year at LaSalle when we won the state championship, that's when everybody was like, who is this kid, Lenny Cook? And I just blew up from there. Then my junior year, uh, played everywhere on the AAU circuit mm -hmm. and just dominated uh, everywhere I played from Boo Williams to uh, all the way down to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, well, my team was good, but I was just a, a standout player. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we won every AAU tournament we went to and – People was just, like you said, coming out of the woodworks, promise, making promises of, well, you can be this, you can be that. And me not knowing the business side of it at that age, just letting people take advantage of me. But no, yeah, but if they were giving you money, I mean, when you're 18, 19 and, and, and guys are giving you a couple hundred here, you know, maybe a grand here, maybe a G here and there. I mean, what? again, in hindsight, you can say, hey, you probably shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have taken it. But when you're 18, 19 and you need the money, you want the money and guys are throwing it at you. It's kind of hard to resist. I will. I, me personally, if I if I was to do it again, I probably would take it again. Uh, if I was in the same predicament that I was in back then, right. you know what I'm saying? And it's hard because a lot of kids don't have that mentor or that guidance or that person that knows the game. You know what I'm saying? What can happen at the end of the day by you taking these things and these people are looking for something in mm -hmm. return? And as a kid, you're not you're not thinking that. Oh well, I got to give them this back. Oh yeah. Let's um. We'll move forward when you were playing in, in in the AAU ball in the summer leagues and whatnot. And again, I thought the one, the defining point of that doc, and obviously turned out to be uh, going forward your career. And and I don't I don't want to make it as much as an exaggeration as maybe people do, but the battle with LeBron, mm -hmm. the summer league game. Uh, where, you know, you guys were trying to get the better of each other, and then he winds up with the winning bucket. And, and you know, after a game like that, first of all, did you know playing against him that he was going to be something? Because I did radio in Ohio, and I saw him play when he was in Akron. And at the time I saw him play, you can tell this is this is a, a, a man among boys. But can you tell there was something special with him, first of all? The first time I played him, it was like, I don't know this kid. Nobody knows who he is. He's coming from Ohio, and he had a hell of a game. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I took him for granted. Um, me being the player that I was at that time, I didn't care who he was, where he was from, and I just thought I was going to come in there and dominate no matter what I did the night before. I, mind you, I had just got done playing Carmelo uh, right before I had to play LeBron, so I'm like, well, if I did that to him and he's already known, then I know I'm going to destroy him. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Sure, so, you're, you're confident. You're yeah, cocky. You're going into yeah, that game. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, like they said, I had I, I was the hometown favorite at that time, and he came in with the attitude of, well, sh who the hell is Lenny Cook? I'm going to go at him, and that's what he did. Yeah. Did, 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 now, going into that game or the uh, summer league ball, you were you were you still touted uh, as number one? Yeah, were I was you, number okay. one because I was still uh, I was a year ahead of him. ahead of him, so, right? Uh, I mean, overall, out of everybody, like from freshmen to seniors, it put me at number two and put him at number one. That's what I, was it because of the shot or out because of the game when so it shot. when you really think about it and again, I don't. I was thinking about this in my mind last night, and I was like, man, is it really an exaggeration to say because of that one shot, to some extent, you kind of changed the course of NBA history? I don't know if it's really stretching it, but for that time, in hindsight, when you look at it, maybe Le LeBron is the guy that kind of goes, uh, um, uh, you know, in the shadows a little bit. He was still going to be LeBron. Yeah, but yeah, still. definitely, definitely. I mean, because he put the work in, you sure. know what I'm saying, and, and he deserves everything he's got gotten so far and and he will be a hall of famer 
and arguably he will be the greatest basketball player ever. Right. And it took me a long time to say that. But at that time, I, I can't really say that the shot mattered because he, he, he played a hell of a game. Yeah. And, uh, the scouts just was like, well, he won the game winning shot. I look at it as if my teammate would have hit those two free throws, whether he hit that shot or not, I would have still won. Would it have been that? Would it have been turned out that way? What What happened after that? What were, What were the the ramifications after that? I mean, you still actually had people saying, "Okay, now it's time. Now it's time. Let's get you going." Uh, two thousand and two NBA draft. I mean, was there something in the back of your mind where you said to yourself, "All right." I got to have a fallback plan. Maybe I need to go to school. You know, should I really trust these guys? Is anyone on my side telling me the right thing to do? Or is everyone telling me what what they think I want to hear? Well, I mean, I never had, I never changed my mind of where I should go to school. Once I signed the letter of intent and Coach Jarvis got fired, I knew I was putting my name in the draft. So it was that direct correlation. He gets fired, boom. You're, yeah, you're, I'm putting my name in the If draft. he would have stayed, you would have went to St. John's. Yeah, I was going to St. John's for a year. Things didn't pan out that way. Uh, I went undrafted. Uh, had the opportunity to play LeBron again uh, that summer in Vegas. Uh, you were with the Celtics, right? No, when we played in well, Vegas. Well, down the road, down the road. Yeah, down, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. Down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. My apologies. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the Celtics summer league, I played well in every game that the right, Celtics played right. me. But when they played, when we played yeah. against Cleveland, they wouldn't play me. <laughs> let, let me go back. Take take us to um. And right, that was obviously down the road. T- take us back to draft night. Um, were, were you watching the draft on TV? Were you Were you? Yeah, were I was you, in New York. You uh, were in New York. I, in New I don't York. I don't remember. I don't I don't remember that moment though during the docs. So refresh my memory. I mean, yeah, you're watching that, guys. That, that get, moment they wasn't around. I, I was gonna say you're watching you're you're watching guys get drafted. You know, it's like it's it's got to be. It was frust- frustrating. Yeah, it was definitely frustrating. Um. Because, for one, my agent was lying to me the whole time. So he's telling me, well, you're going to be top 25 instead of a lottery pick. Uh, and I'm waiting for that moment. And I got my friends, my family, you know what I'm saying, and my name don't get called. So it was like a blow to me, a low blow, because I feel like you really didn't have my best interest at heart. You just wanted to find out if I was going to be the next best thing for you. To, sure. You know what I'm saying, to piggyback off of. Did – um did – did did your agent at the time or, or the guys you were talking to, did they tell you the difference between being lottery pick money wise and, and Yeah, I mean I already knew. I already knew the uh, difference between the money, you know what I'm saying? Like the first ten pe- the ten picks get uh three million a year, which is guaranteed. Right. Uh then it goes down from Which there. is chump change yeah, now. Yeah, now it is right? yeah, plus definitely. your shoe deal, your your endorsements. Mm-hmm. Um you don't even really have to be good and you get a shoe and, deal and all of a sudden He was telling me, uh the pick that Juan Dixon got to the Wizards, that was my pick. And uh, things didn't pan out that way. Uh, you, you played a little bit. Now we get you played a little bit in the D-League, the old mm-hmm. U.S. Uh, BL. Mm-hmm. You had the cup of coffee with the Celtics. And again, according, like I said, you know, you do a little research, you watch. It seemed like you played relatively well in uh, summer league with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had the chance to play against uh, the, the Cavs, and they, they didn't. They wouldn't play me. Uh, I would to never, this day, do you I know why? I would never had an answer to that. Uh, no, no one answered that question for me yet, and that's the answer that I'm looking. Is for. there is there a thought? Let me play the cynic. Is there a thought that if you played, do you think they wanted you to play well? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I you, mean, you know like what I I'm said, saying, I played right? well against everybody that I played against. From right. Atlanta, we played Atlanta, the Nets. Because uh, uh, you would think you go out there and you ball well and you play well against LeBron, and you get yours whether it's summer league or and not. It, and that's the thing. Like I, I felt like, all right, if the Celtics wasn't going to keep, keep me, it was 31 teams left that, yeah. that, that was there looking. Yeah. Uh, maybe one of them would have gave me an opportunity. But they kept me around till preseason uh, because Walter McCarty was a free agent that year. And it was up to whether he was going to sign. This is what they was telling me. If he signs, we're letting you go before preseason starts. And he signed the day before preseason starts. It, it Listen, <laughs> It's just like in any sport. It's just like in the NFL with the practice squad players. I mean, at the end of the day, the guys that play in summer league or practice squad, they're all mercenaries. Definitely. You're filling Definitely. out the roster. You're getting your 10-day contract with the hope of getting another day 10-day contract exactly. with the hopes of getting another 10-day contract where a lot of times, and this is what I firmly believe, some of the guys that um, they don't get drafted, 
Uh, they don't have the uh, stellar standout careers in the NBA. You know, some of them make a pretty good living going playing overseas. Overseas, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. I mean, you can make great money overseas. Yeah. And it's tax free. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is actually the bottom line. It helps you. All right. Well, uh, we're we're going to talk a little more. We're going to take quick time out. Uh, 19 past 1 o'clock hour in a uh, Friday edition of the warm up right here on 97.3 ESPN FM. Rich Canyon is here. We'll take you up to 2 o'clock. Lenny Cook in studio talking a little bit about his story and, of course, uh, what he's going to be doing going forward, doing some work with Atlantic City and the uh, men's high school basketball team and, of course, Gene Allen and maybe trying to school these young guys into avoiding some of the same mistakes as well and some of the advice he has for him. 20 past 1 o'clock hour. We'll come back on the other side. All right, 23 past the 1 o'clock hour on a Friday edition of the warm-up right here on 97.3 ESPN-FM. Rich Canyon is here. Josh on the other side. Lenny Cook in studio with us. Talking about uh, his story, his career. Again, the documentary premiere 2013 Tribeca Film Festival now down in Atlantic City with uh, Coach Allen. And uh, getting his feet wet from a coaching standpoint, yeah, I was just I was just schooling you during the break, telling you who went to your high school. Yeah, yeah you definitely <laughs> dropped the knowledge on me that time. <laughs> um, and we were talking before about uh, Rucker Park and everyone that played there: uh, Kenny Anderson, Chrissy Mullins, uh, Marbury. Um, you know, yourself, and then I threw out, you know, the goat. Yeah, it, it's funny because, and and I forgot he passed pretty early. Yeah, uh, he was in his fifties, but. And I, I don't know. I don't. Did David Thompson that went to NC State play at Rucker Park too? There's a story about David Thompson back in the day in the 70s where they literally put, and I think Dr. J did it once too. Uh, they put a uh, a quarter on top of the on top of the back. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And both of them mm -hmm. were able uh, to turn around and and grab it. That's how high these cats yeah. got up in the air. That's crazy. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But you know, so after so you have the with the Celtics and then and then the cup of coffee. Now you you did wind up playing a little bit overseas, right? Yeah, yeah, I played overseas in the Philippines, China, Brazil, Kuwait, uh, Copenhagen. What what what's what what was the game like over there? Uh, it was different in different countries. Uh, did they treat you guys like superstars though? When I was in the Philippines, you thought I was a bra. Re really? Yeah, I loved it. You didn't try to tell me. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> nah. <laughs> it, I, I, I I love the Philippines though. I played over there two years actually. Um, China, Kuwait. Wow. I really didn't like China and Kuwait though. What um? And you said you did you play over in Europe? You said you played over in Spain. Spain, yeah. What do you think of uh the European players that you watch them now? I mean, they're coming in with the mentality of learning the game, right? And playing it basic. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's where our guys is getting confused uh, over here because they're fundamentally sound. <laughs> and and they've been playing professional basketball forever, forever over there. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, now we got to go to college for a year. Those guys are starting at 14, 15 years yep. old playing yep. professional overseas. Now, you after you bounce around a little bit, and, and again, just clarify, correct me if I'm wrong, you – and uh, the, the the old, well, I don't want to say the old, but um, you got in a car accident when you were with the ABA? Yes. Correct? Yes. You, so you busted up your leg pretty bad. Yes. Uh, I was in a car accident uh, right after a game uh, December 23rd of our first game. Tiny Archibald was our coach at the time. Um, he left me dead on arrival. They wanted to amputate my leg. Uh, I was in a wheelchair for two and a half years. Um, and that's when I lost really like the love for the game for a while. Um, when I came when I came out of the coma, I was just lost. You know what I'm saying? And couldn't nobody explain to me what really happened. Um, I was with a teammate after dinner, and he totaled the truck like tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, w was it hard to mentally start to get to the to the rehab, the rehabilitation process? Because they always say I mean, it's the toughest. It, because then you went uh, back over the Philippines, right? Yeah, and you went, tore your ACL. I, I, went to, uh, I went to Kuwait, Kuwait. afterwards. Okay. Uh, once I rehabbed and stuff, after they told me I would never play or walk or ever again. So I made it my mental toughness where you're not going to tell me I have to stop playing. And right. I really don't have to. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I pushed myself through rehab and made it my business to try it again, even though I was out of shape and stuff like that. But I wanted to show that. The work that you put in, it still can happen. 
What you know when when you look back, when was that moment? And maybe you were by yourself. Maybe you were uh, in the kitchen or with your family. Maybe you were cooking up something. Maybe you were eating. maybe you were watching a game where you sat back and said, you know, man, I, I, man, I, I made mistakes. I got taken advantage of. I screwed this. That that should be me right there. Like where everyone has that moment where it's almost like a punch in the face where they realize, and it's hard. It's a harsh reality where it's just not going to happen. I mean, after my car accident, that's how I felt. Like. I didn't want to watch the game because of these guys that was playing and I know that I was better than and and people that know sports knew I was better than, you know what I'm saying? And once my son started playing basketball, that's when I was like, man, I, I can't give up on it like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to help him, you know what I mean? Or I got to help the next child that's coming up, you know right. what I'm saying? That's going to be in the same situation I was in. Hopefully they don't turn out like me. What, was it hard um, when I remember in the doc where in the documentary where you guys went back with, with some of the directors and the producers um, and you went uh, to one of the Nick games and you saw a bunch of those guys. You saw uh, you saw Stoudemire, you saw Mello, you saw those guys. I mean, and at first you can tell they were trying to they were trying to put the name, you yeah. know, and then at first you tell them, hey, Lenny Cook. And yeah. then, you know, what was it? Was it humbling? I mean, they always showed me like respect. The guys that actually are stars in the NBA, whenever I see them, they always like, man, you should be out here with us. But does it make you smile? But does it kind of it kind of rips you up a little I, bit? A little bit because I, in all actuality, I should be. Uh, I just made bad decisions. Um, like you said, it was taken man, taken advantage of when these guys had people behind them since they were seven, eight years old. They had the same people behind them pushing them to do the right thing and pushing them to work constantly, you know what I'm saying, on and off the court. Right. Because a lot of my my mistakes was off the court. It right. wasn't it wasn't my on the court issues because I dominated when I played. Right. Um so the kids now I just want them to know like you got to be aware of it's always someone watching you no matter what, especially sure. if you in that line. The guys you never heard of, they come out of the woodwork when money starts flashing and promises are being made. You get those calls from guys, oh, remember me back in the day or exactly. this and that. And then they, everyone wants to just, you know, they want to leech. They want to start grabbing on. What? H- how did you find your way back down here with an opportunity uh, with Atlantic City and, and Coach Allen and, and, you know, to just get back, you know, get back to the game really I, and, and I, to get I'm back? All, I always come back home. Um, I'm originally from Atlantic sure. City, you know what I'm saying? But I always come down here at least once or twice a month. But, who extended uh, the open and who extended the invitation though? Well, I uh, – I came down here in April of last year and had an event where I threw like a clinic and uh, had some of my guys that I play against play against alumni from Pleasantville um, in April, uh, but it didn't turn out well because it snowed that day. <laughs> Surprise. The day, yeah, exactly. <laughs> April 9th, it snowed. Um, but I had I had guys, I had White Chocolate come, I had a whole lot of game come, uh, Gary Irvin, sure. I had a lot of guys come. And we played against uh, a lot of uh, Pleasantville High School alumni. And uh, I met a female uh, here who does a lot of stuff with basketball. And she's into the sports and stuff like that. And uh, she told me to come here and start all over. And I've been here. Uh, She reached out to Gene for me. And I appreciate Gene for allowing me to be a part of this team. And I've grown with these kids, you know what I mean? Like, these are my little brothers. Coach Gene is like a father and a mentor for me. Uh, Shave, Coach Carl, basically the whole organization, and, and they motivated me to do the right things. You start to see that with, say, like the success that Coach Allen's had for so many years and the 300 wins and really mm-hmm. throughout the course of his career um, and being a, a mainstay down here. And then you get to see, you know, these young kids who are going to class, maybe working, just trying to find their niche in life, and then they're they're busting it on the court. Does that kind of give you a little more juice, you know, a little more, okay, hey, I, I got a little spark now. It's something to get up. You know, this is a reason to wake up in the morning now. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy doing it. Like, uh, usually I just be really just sitting around chilling until something come up. But right. Like, now I, I, I thrive for just going to practice with these kids and – and going to these games with these kids because I want to see them do well. You know what I mean? It's a great group of guys that we have. Um, 
got a lot of talent, got a lot of potential. Uh, and, and these guys know right from wrong. Yeah. So it, which is not, which it, is the main thing exactly. sometimes. That that's the key. Exactly. The kids that we have, they know right from wrong. These they're no trouble kids. So at the end of the day it's just we're trying to get them to become men. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're going to spend more time off the court than on the court. When what was the when was the first time you watched a documentary of its entirety and when it was done? What 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 did you think? It took me almost a whole year to that, watch. That's it. what I thought. It took me a whole year. I uh, I watched it when we had the first screening um, in New York before it came out in the Tribeca Film Festival. I watched some of it then. I walked out of it, walked, walked out on it. Me and my mom was there for the first screening. I walked out on it. But like a, a whole year later, I watched the whole thing because my daughter wanted to watch it, and she wouldn't let me move. Right. And uh, I was just like, damn. You know what I mean? Because it can be here today and going tomorrow. No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? And and these kids got to understand, once they get to that next level, it's going to be even harder. You know what I mean? College, just life in general. We're, and how can I ask this? And I say this with respect to you. Was there a moment where, regardless of how everything transpired, you thought to yourself, you know what? This, This is on me, man. I dropped the ball here. Were you bitter? Or were you able to just watch it, absorb it, think about it, go on, and then start to make peace? Right. I, the healing- I never was bitter about the situation uh, because at times I never expected me to be an NBA player until later. Right. Uh, it was never a dream for me as a kid. You know what I'm saying? So I was never bitter. I, I have no regrets. Would I do things differently? Yes. What would you tell Lenny Cook if you can go back 15 years right now being a grown man, being in your 30s now, what would you tell that young Lenny Cook right now? Stay in school. Get them grades together. Go ahead and sign the letter of intent. You, you, you made a commitment to that school. Go to that school for a year. Play well. And then put your name in the draft. What, you, you, you watch a lot of the NBA now? Yes. Do, okay. Time. So, all right. Yeah, because, you yeah. know, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you talk to f- uh, former athletes or sometimes in the way things maybe uh, don't work out for them, sometimes they, eh, what, nah, what, uh, I, I, let, I, let me put you on the spot with yeah, this one. What, what do you think of the Knicks? Terrible. Okay. That's fair. You're all right. I'm, with I'm you're, all right, a, you're all right in my book. I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm a Carmelo Anthony fan. I'm a Joe King Noah fan. That's one of my close friends. Uh, you do real, you friend. do realize Phil Jackson's ruining the Knicks. Uh <laughs> I can't say that, man. <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna say I mean, that. Gonna say, I mean, Mel, listen, Melo, Mel- he's a he's a great all around player, but I, he, they need he, the, he need the pieces. He needs they the also pieces. gotta play some defense sometimes too, Lenny. Who plays defense nowadays in the NBA? You gotta play a little who, bit of defense. Who plays though? Who 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 plays ninety four feet of defense now? Not individual players, but team defense. Okay. I got to see a little bit. Hey, I get on the Sixers sometimes because of Julio Okafor. I want to see him play both sides of mm-hmm. the court. I mean, yeah, I understand that, man. But you got to get you got to get him somebody that's fresh, man. I mean, you got to think. They Mello, also, when Mello, they signed him, it was a like, yeah, in... no trade. But you are going to give him that max contract and no trade? Yeah, that's true. And plus, you don't have a draft pick? That's crazy. Uh, that is, that you... is crazy. Okay. But, I mean, I think he's going to end up in L.A. Do you? When it's all said and done, when LeBron's story is written, will he surpass Jordan? Because we always, they're two different apples and oranges, and it always seems right around finals times we have this argument on the air. Statistically, he would pass Jordan everything except for rings. Okay, I believe he, and again, this is me. It's my opinion. You might agree, you might differ. I think he's a great, he's a brilliant player. He's, he, Mount, he's all time. Mm-hmm. Jordan had to, I'm going to cut your heart out. And sometimes, I don't know if I always saw that from LeBron. Now, if that's my only little knock on him, so be it. But I think that's the little difference between the two. His, his killer is that? LeBron never had that, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. LeBron never had that's it. That's what I'm saying. School, that's what I'm saying. It. Okay, so then you agree. Yeah, Jordan he, he, had that. Yeah, he, LeBron never had it. He never had it. You know what I'm saying? He just His IQ for the game is just so high. And he know how to get everyone involved. But at the end of the day, nine times out of ten, three seconds left on the clock, the game is tied. LeBron don't want the ball. That's fair. He don't. I, I've I've had the same and, and, same sentiments. He'll look to pass sometimes, and the guys like Jordan. Exactly. He's, he's still an all time great. Oh, he will be. He yeah. will be. And like I said, arguably 
when it's all said and done, like you said, he will be arguably considered the greatest player ever uh, to me. What, um, you know, you look at some of these franchises over the years and you look what Golden State's been able to do. You look at San Antonio, which is kind of like the model of consistency. Mm-hmm. Now take it in our backyard for a moment with the Sixers and they had the tanking. They had uh, going through the process. They were rebuilding. They weren't winning many games. Now they're starting to show a little bit of juice, a little bit of signs of life. Uh, what, what's your thought um, on, on Embiid? I love Embiid. Yeah. I love Embiid. I was with them for, uh, I was with the Sixers for training camp uh, at Stockman and, he he he's the one. Yeah, he's the one. He's the one that, uh, not this year, but once once they're gonna be re- rebuild around him. Sure, absolutely. They're definitely gonna rebuild because they have so many bigs. But eventually, okay, you have Noel, who I think is a better rim protector defensively than Jaleel, who can score the bucket, mm-hmm. score the basketball. But I think one of them's gonna go. Um, I think Noel would be a better fit. But once they get Simmons back, mm-hmm. it's gonna be some trouble. It's gonna be some trouble in the East, especially with my Bulls arguing the way they argue. <laughs> is there any way the Knicks can give back Derrick Rose? I, mean, I wish. I mean, come on. And then, you know, n- not for nothing, too, when when you look at some of these veteran guys, some of them always think the grass is greener on the other side. Like, Wade has not played particularly well. They knew it was going to be a bad situation for him. Um, I get it. You want to come back home. I think he, did. I think he wanted to go to Chicago because he wanted to retire right. at home. Right. That's what I. That was just my opinion. Right. Um, best team in the NBA right now. The best team in the NBA right now. I would, Golden State Warriors. You think it's going to be Golden State and Cleveland again? Yeah. Uh, real quick, and I know Golden State wins in six. Golden State wins in six. It's 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 January. We we have got a couple more months. I'm not worrying about that. Well, because Melo's going to uh, Cleveland now. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what's going to help. Hold on a second. Oh, hold you, on now. That's what's going to happen. No. Uh, oh, no. Okay. No. Because <laughs> no. I don't. First of all, <laughs> why in the world? Okay, you're going to get rid of a player in love who's four or five years younger than Melo. Mm-hmm. Come on. They, that's not Cle- happening. They, that's why Cleveland. Cleveland would never do that. But it's going to be either Miami or. I, or LA. I told you during the break the night that Wagner scored 100 points, and what did you say? The same night, the kid in Texas scored 101. That kid from Old Japan scored uh, 99. <laughs> I forgot his name. <laughs> but uh, he scored 99. DeWan Wagner had 100. And I forgot the kid's name in Texas. He had 101. <laughs> back pages, All in the same back night. pages again. <laughs> Who is the best player you ever played against uh, in your life when you played uh, in Rucker Park? Oh, man. Who did I have to match up with that was the best? The best person yeah. I had to guard. The best person you saw and the best person you guarded. The best person I had to guard, uh, God bless his soul, is uh, Ali Mo. Mm-hmm. Uh, six nine. He can do it all. The do wingspan, anything. do, do yeah, it. Yep, was, yep. Yeah, amazing. I know, I know. He was amazing. Uh, and just the best person overall that I've seen, uh, the best ball handler I've seen was the bone collector. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he did whatever he wanted to do. Um, but... Uh, once again, that kid from Old Japan, he wasn't too bad either in Rucker Park. Uh, Lenny Cook. He was not yeah, bad. I mean, he, play, he he balled a little bit. Yeah, he, he balled played, a little he, bit. He, a little, he still he looks a... like he can ball a little bit, right? <laughs> 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 Always staying humble. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it, man. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I you, miss you, it. You I look, miss but it. you look you look like, though, you're you're kind of having fun. You're, you're at peace where you're at right now. Yeah, because I, I, all, I'm, all I want to do is work with these kids. That's, that's great. That's my goal. That's, that's great. my goal. I just want to, the next generation that's coming up, man, I want them to say, oh, man, Lenny Cook told me to do it this way, and it worked. Yeah. And you're rocking and, the and Cleveland Browns. And to use me as an example of what not to do, and I'm, and I'm satisfied. As long as you can spread that message, I mean – Browns hat, I'll get you maybe a a, a Giants hat. You'd oh, be all right nah, with a Giants nah, hat. I mean, well, I know just, it's matching the yeah, attire. All right, only listen, reason. I understand that. <laughs> I w- but that I'm w- saying. I will well, never. All right, or a St. John's hat. I'll get you a nice St. John's hat. Well, I'm a Kentucky Wildcat, oh, man. Oh, come on. <laughs> Jumping on the bandwagon. That's horrible. I'm a Kentucky Wildcat, We'll get, we'll get you back in during March Madness. Okay, that right, sounds listen, like a plan. Listen, I appreciate uh, the honesty, uh, and it is a very good story, and I know – uh, a lot of times you can watch the doc on the man, um, and they did a heck of a job. Yeah. The guys that you worked with, uh, it did excellent uh, reviews at the Tribeca back in 2013. Uh, when's Atlantic City play tonight? 
They play tonight uh, we, or this we weekend? Play, we play tomorrow in Philly. Okay. Uh, we played last night against Violin. Okay. Uh, got a W last a fight and night. Fighting clan of Violin, yeah. Yeah, we play uh, in Philly tomorrow night. But uh, All right. I want to thank Coach Gene for uh, having me a part of this organization, man. And I can't thank him enough, you know what I mean, because every day that I get up and go to these practices and work with these kids is just a blessing for me. You got a good mentor. You got a good mentor definitely, in that. And, and you know what? You got a lot of support. A lot of people are pulling for you. Thanks. Uh, we'll argue next town about LeBron and Jordan, St. John's and Yeah, Kentucky. I'm here. I'm here. I'm a, well, I'm a, I'm a phone know, call away well, now. Well, here's the problem, though, because I know St. John's is going to stink again this year, and they are going to stink, and it's a bad se- year for Chris Mullen, so... You know, it's you'll okay. get better. We, we, we'll, right, we'll come talk back around. All right. We'll t- <laughs> I'm going to get my son to go to St. John's. There, and it's right, going to be okay. Go. <laughs> right. I like that. That's fine. <laughs> we can work it out through that. All right. 143. Uh, good stuff on Lenny Cook.